Welcome to 5 Minute Tool Reviews, where I review a tool that I bought with my own money in 5 minutes or less. Today I am reviewing my Grizzly Table Saw. If you watch my videos, you'll see this saw is used in almost every video. I've had this saw for right at a year now, and it has seen a lot of use. It is the G0690 uh, 3 horsepower or table saw, and I believe including shipping, this saw is shipped to my door for about $2,000. I've done a few modifications to it, um, just to set up the way I want to use it. So let's kind of go through and walk through the features, starting with what I think is the most important part of the table saw, which is the grip fence. So I've actually decided I'm going to start with the power switch, so that way you can see that the saw is safe while we do all this. Basically, you've got the green button, turns it on, that button turns it off. It has a safety pin here that you use to lock it out. There's a little hook that goes on the other side, but it's long since gone. So here's the fence. Let's dial in and look at it. You've got your polyethylene, uh, your phenolic resin plate here that's screwed on. It's nice and and this thing has a ton of adjustment, so you can get this guy dialed in where you want it. Starting with the knob, you have a very positive lock that holds this guy true, pulls in. You have um, six-way adjustment. You can adjust it this way and that way with two screws that are in here with an Allen key. This adjusts your uh, squareness or to the blade so you can get this, dial this in to 90 degrees, both this way and that way. Um, and then you can adjust the tension with these rollers. Um, very smooth motion. I did not clean this thing before I use it. You can see there's a ton of sawdust here and you've got plenty of a adjustment with the ruler right there. Had no issues with the top, just some smile, minor spot rusting with some things. I uh, keep it uh, lubricated and waxed well and try to keep it clean. Um, but I'm in a really humid environment. Guard comes off with the Allen key. They include all the Allen keys you need with it right here. That pops off. It comes with a dado insert. So the blade has a riving knife and a splitter if you want that. And a, one of those blade guards. Riving knife can come out. It's kind of hard to get out of here because it gets a bunch of sawdust packed into it. And honestly, for our purposes here, I don't need to get it out. But what I normally have to do is bang this with a little uh, mallet to vibrate that dust loose enough so I can pull it out. You can even calibrate the riving knife to tilt and lean over and back to get it accurate. Um, I don't really use my blade guard that much. I know I should, but I don't. I just use the riving knife and the riving knife pretty much stays on there no matter what. This is a Freud, uh, Freud Industrial uh, 52 ATBR all-purpose blade. Um, it's kind of my go-to blade. I will put an Amazon link to this blade and it's less expensive thin curve uh, little brother that I use on my job site saw. This is a full curve, and then they have a thin curve as well. Um, great all-purpose saw blade for your shop if you're lazy like me and don't like changing your saw blades. The saw blade adjusts here for up and down and there for bevel. This gauge right here, I never use it. I did a review of my digital angle finder a few weeks ago, and I will link to that in the description as well, but that's what I use to set my angle. I don't really use the bevel indicator, but for our purposes, you see, and once you get it going, it's got a big, nice, heavy carriage under here to move everything. And the positive stops on this were dead on from the factory and have been dead on ever since. There we go. So you can see. Okay, so now we're going to look underneath the saw at the underbelly. That's what matters, right? This is a 220 volt saw. You cannot convert it to 120. So you do need 220 circuitry to run it. Um, it's 
way quieter than my uh, job site table saw. So here you go. This is what you get inside the saw. This is, you know, the pile up of sawdust. It doesn't go through the dust collector. Um, about once a week, we go through, blow this out good. This is a three horsepower um, motor. I think it's a Leeson motor, I think. They were really proud of the model uh, motor it was whenever I was buying this thing. You got all the guts under here, big crank. It's a triple V belt. So this is one, two, and three belts that drive this thing. And then you have some nice big gears that hold this guy in place. And that is what we do. Very smooth operation, um, pretty quiet. So now I wanna talk about a few things I don't really like about this saw. Um, one is the dust collection is just kind of mediocre. Um, a, even with a four inch dust collection system, you're still gonna get uh, a lot of s sawdust piled up in the bottom of the cabinet. I mentioned if I had to order it again, I'd probably get the 691, which has the 52 inch rip fence. This one only came with a rails that get, gave you about 30 inches of rip, and I have since shifted them over. You can see this hole is no longer there. I shifted it from this one was right here, and then this one was right there, and I shifted it over one. And the problem with that is now there's only two that are actually in the saw itself. And then of course over here in the extension wing, I have had zero issues with this, and it's been this way for several months. And again, this is used five days a week for several hours. Well, I guess if you added up the amount of time you use it, it's probably not that much because it's kind of on, off, on, off. But um, this fence is great with jigs. I've got a few jigs, including my crosscut sled that lives there. Um, really easy to build a sled for it. You've got some nice, good grooves. Um, everything from the factory to the best of my calibration abilities has been dead on and stayed dead on from the factory. The extension wing did have a uh, millimeter table here. Uh, I since took it out whenever I moved my rails over and just put some three quarter inch plywood that I finished with some flat uh, master's armor. And then I have a router plate dropped into this. This is nothing fancy at all. So this is my table saw. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Um, I'm very, very pleased with the Grizzly saw. Um, I don't think it is lacking compared to any other brand that I have seen. So what I buy again? Absolutely. Am I happy with the purchase and the quality of this purchase? Absolutely. I think it's a great buy. Um, this saw will most likely serve me the rest of my life. And it's going to be powerful enough to do anything that you can do with a 10 inch table saw. You can add your router to it. You can buy the sliding table add-on, which is something I keep going back and forth on and whether or not it's something I want to purchase. So overall, Grizzly gets the thumbs up, you should give this video the thumbs up as well and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you next time on 5-Minute Tool Reviews. And this one is probably going to end up being a slightly longer than 5-Minute Tool Review. So thanks for watching the extra bonus footage, right? All right, see you guys next time.